This evening we have a few little things that we've had to move around, so I hope everybody's a little flexible, having a good time. Is everybody enjoying themselves? Thank you. I want to just take a quick minute to thank a few people. Um, our committee, Pat Ives. Pat, are you here? Jamie Linseth, Melissa Cox, Christy Carney, and Shay Lund. I also want to acknowledge our staff, Annabelle Versage. Annabelle, are you floating around? She's around here somewhere. Annabelle was just here, and as well as Jamie Mossberger, which is our staff on the chamber. I want to give a special thank you to Marcy Knight and also Nicole Freeman, who came in and helped us quite a bit in planning this event. As you know, this is my first event and the first event for our chamber staff, so it's been very appreciative to have them come in with their expertise and help us out. I, we also, does everybody have the coats? Have they checked out the coat checks? We have two young ladies from the soccer club. They are accepting tips tonight. We appreciate them very much for coming and helping out. This is what chambers are all about in our community and our businesses, and that's supporting our youth and our young people and teaching them about leadership. So they are in the coat check. Please make sure you take an opportunity to thank them for being here and helping us out. I also want to acknowledge MDI. MDI has always been so supportive of us. They have always donated the totes, so all the stuff that you're going to take home from the auctions and the raffles, you're going to get a nice bucket to take home with you for all your items. So we appreciate MDI. They always are available to volunteer and help us out. I also want to say Sean, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say his name wrong, so I'm not going to say it. But Sean is the new owner of the former Kaler Park Hotel. And depending on how long you've lived here, how many remembers the Kaler Park Hotel as their regency? Have I, oh, there's a few people that got their hands up, okay. So the regency, then it was what, the Park Hotel and the Kaler or somewhere along that. So anyway, Sean, who is the new owner, I've had the opportunity to talk with him. I've had an opportunity to tour the, the hotel. We did not have skirts all of a sudden for our tables. Uh, the raffle tables and as it uh, was I called a few people couldn't find them and I called Sean I said hey by any chance do you have anything left over he says I don't know but you are more than welcome to come and he let me come in and we ended up with table skirts so I want to appreciate and thank him as well he's not here tonight but I do want to acknowledge his contribution to this evening's event as well I think that I think that microphone is playing out there. I think that is a perfect example of how the community has really come together. Obviously, these last couple of years have been particularly difficult um, for folks everywhere. Um, the business community is probably at the top of that list. Congratulations to all of you for making it through. Hopefully, we're at the tail end of this. Um, but I think the fact that we're all here together tonight is uh, it deserves a round of applause. So, And now that we have your full attention, dinner is ready. So we're going to, the girls will be going around and pointing out the tables that are able to go up to the buffet line. Please don't go unless you're given the green light and enjoy your food. Thank you all for coming to A Night on Howard Street, 2022 annual dinner for the Hibbing Area Chamber of Commerce. My name is Annabelle Versich and I am the Public Relations Coordinator for the Hibbing Area Chamber of Commerce. I want to start by thanking our sponsors that made this night happen. We are first going to thank our Platinum Plus sponsors. If you guys would just raise your hand when I call you guys, that would be great. I'm going to start with the I'm going to start with Advanced Surgical Associates of Northern Minnesota, the Hibbing Public Utilities, Hibbing Taconite, 
National Bank of Commerce, Park State Bank, Scranton Iron Inc., DBA, Hibbing Salvage and Supply, Security State Bank, the St. Louis County Commissioners, and Super One. Those are our Platinum Plus sponsors. I would now like to announce our Platinum sponsors, which is Bar Engineering, Iron Range Plumbing and Heating, North Country GM, Polymet Mining, and Range Regional Airport. I would now like to move on to our gold sponsors, which is All American Title Company, North Star Credit Union, if I could have a round of applause for those two. And then lastly, our silver sponsor, Max Gray Construction. This year, we were able to introduce a new tier system for our membership programs. So I would also like to announce our trustee sponsors, which are Fairview, Hibbing Taconite, l and Radiator, Scranton Iron Inc., DBA, Hibbing Salvage and Supply. I'm now going to turn over the mic to Jamie. All right. We would also like to say thank you to the Hibbing Elks Lodge staff for catering and hosting our event, along with the Sugar Shack for providing desserts for us tonight. Thank you so much for your support. This event would not happen without partnerships with businesses like you. We would like to also introduce our honored guests tonight. Please hold the applause until they are all standing. We have Congressman Pete Stauber's representatives, Isaac Schultz and Julia en Enga Bretson. We have Kristen Vaki, who is emceeing for us tonight. We have St. Louis County Commissioner Mike Jugovich. And we also have Minnesota House Representative Julie Sandstead. We also have the county attorney, Kim Mackey, with us tonight as well. And the county auditor. And the county auditor. <laughs> All right, if we could have a round of the applause for our honorary guests one more time. And we are going to invite Shelly Hansen, president of the Hibbing Area Chamber, up at this time. Nice job, ladies. They did a great job, didn't they? Can you imagine what it's like at 8 o'clock in the morning on a Monday with the two of them? It's pretty uh, loud, that's for sure. Right, Annabelle? Yes. yes. And Jamie, thank you very much as well. I just wanted to say a couple of words about our year in 2021. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Shelley Hansen. I've lived in Hibbing for many years, and we're not going to say how many. I raised three young boys in the community. I've been involved in soccer and hockey and wrestling and a number of other activities throughout the community that I've made some different connections. Of course, in August of 2020, when I started, we were in the middle of a pandemic, and there was a lot of things that were going on and a lot of things that just weren't happening. But in 2021, as we moved forward, we were able to accomplish many things. I had a great board to work with that had already been looking at a number of different things that they wanted to do and allowed me to move forward with those plans. Our very first thing that we did is we moved the location of the chamber for over 20 years, the chamber had been in the basement of the U.S. Bank's building. It had always been the perfect location for them, but as times changed, we looked at something different. And so if you go to Howard Street, 109 East Howard Street, you will find that the chamber has moved there. Great location. Please stop in and visit us. We updated our website. This was another change that we went forward. It was a plan that we wanted to make sure that our members had the ability to locate us and that our tourism and our visitors also were able to find what they needed. And so we also updated the website. It it's now the place where people refer to when they're looking for local events. We've connected our social media to drive people to our website. And our business directory now has over 300 in total businesses from attorneys to wellness and all that's in between. Our membership has also changed, as Annabelle had mentioned, we have changed our membership where it's always been a tier or an employee base. So if you had one employee, you paid one thing. 
and if you had five, you paid something different, but what you received was the same. So we changed that. Your, your membership is no longer based on the number of employees you have, but the business value that you want from the chamber. And so our retail storefronts, they may be more valued in needing our marketing, where our manufacturing business is. I don't like holding this. That's, that's Annabelle's fault. I like doing this. All right, I feel better. So our manufacturing businesses, they value the resources of maybe our, our leadership program, where another company might need the resources of working with our government structures and policies and procedures. So now with the new membership structure, you have seven different options, and you can decide what it is that you want from your chamber. You can applaud. <laughs> Thank you. As you are aware, we hired new staff, Annabelle Versich and Jamie Musburger. The board of directors also agreed. One of the things that I quickly found out, I've worked with nonprofits throughout the years, and so right away I wanted to do an event. I went and applied for a grant. Everything was great. And then they said, you can't have the grant. And I said, what do you mean? You're not, you're not a 501c. I said, of course we are. We're tax exempt. Turns out we're 506. A little different, if you're an accountant in the audience, you certainly know what I'm talking about. Everybody else can just kind of glaze over. But basically what it means is we can't get a lot of grants and a lot of different funding to do different things because we're a 506. So the board was wonderful. They worked with me. They allowed me to develop our own foundation. So in December, we received our tax exempt number for our foundation, and now we're able to apply for grants and other opportunities for our community. Thank you. I have to say I'm pretty excited about that too. So 2022, we've got a lot of new developments and there's a lot of new things that are going to be happening. In 2022, our business retention and expansion committee, is there anybody here from that committee? Jen, was around here somewhere. Hi, Jen. So we have a committee. If you're a chamber member, you are able to be involved in all the different committees that we have. And so one of the things that the 2022 business retention committee is going to be working on is working with that foundation to find different grants to do revitalization of the community, expand technology, infrastructure, broadband, and just different workforce development, to just name a few things. We're currently working on an offering an advanced leadership program. We have a leadership program that's been involved since, well, 26 years, I believe. Is that correct, Pat Ives? I know Pat is out there somewhere. She's way in the back. Oh, she's listening to me. She nodded her head. 26 years at our leadership program, and we take 30 people, we put the information out there, and every year we're full to capacity. And this year we started talking to people and I said, you know what, we've sent all of our employees. And so we decided to offer an advanced leadership program, so this will be coming in the following year as well. Many of you have already received phone calls, you've received emails, some of you have called us to ask if it was right. We are working with a consulting group, and we are going to be bringing a new chamber directory back to our community. And this chamber directory will highlight our chamber members, but it's also going to highlight our community. And what this will do is we're going to talk about the history of our community. We're going to talk about why you want to come here and play, recreation, camping, swimming, kayaking, snowshoeing, skiing. We're going to have all of that included. The Greyhound Bus Museum, Bob Dylan, our colleges, our churches. All of this will be in our directory. This directory will be at our hotel. It'll be at our clinics. It'll be at our restaurants. It'll be on your dining room table, and it will be going out and being mailed to everybody that asks for one. So once again, we're going to be back on track to marketing our community to bring people here to live, to play, and to develop their businesses. You can clap that too. So yes, if you receive those emails, please respond. If you have any questions, please contact us. So tonight, we celebrate the achievements of our lifelong businesses. The Android, of course, has been a business that's been here since 1924. Anybody can tell me? Actually, I just did a research project and I found out that the blocks on Howard Street from 100 to 400 are all on the National Registry. Anybody correct me? I'm correct? Yeah. Pretty exciting. Yes, Carrie is telling me yes. Thank you. So there is a lot of excitement that goes on. We also have a lot of new businesses in our community. During a pandemic, we actually had some new businesses. Amazing Grace, 
was one of them. The Blueberry Fields moved downtown. Uh, Arrowhead Motorcycle and Apparel expanded their store. So we had a lot of exciting things that happened in 22, 2021 going into 2022. So we're here to celebrate those, acknowledge our new businesses, bring them into the chamber, and I look forward to working with you and your business and your employees. The year 21 was busy for the chamber, and of course, our chamber chair of the board, I have to think about that, chamber chair of the board, who unfortunately she missed out on a lot of the fanfare, the applause, the activities, and the excitement that goes with it. So please welcome to the podium from IRACOR, our 2021 Hibbing Area Chamber of Commerce, Chair of the Board, Jody Dahl. Thank you, Shelley. I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the entire board and staff for pulling together this past year. Uh, not only has the Hibbing Area Chamber withstood the challenges presented due to COVID-19, but we also transitioned presidents, office staff, and our physical location. Each of these changes could have been enough to set any organization off their path, not us. Thanks to COVID, this is my welcome and for farewell speech, all rolled into one. Some people might be happy about that. <laughs> Another thing to groan about COVID for, right? Okay. So let me talk you through my journey with the Hibbing Area Chamber of Commerce from the start. After completing the leadership program, Lori Fido strongly encouraged me to join the board. Everyone remembers how, Lord, how persuasive Lori could be. The chamber would be my first formal board experience, but I was eager to learn and she saw potential in me. Thankfully, our community, all of you folks, are very comfortable with the chamber and our work and are very gracious to newbies such as myself. I dove right in. Lori, the ACE volunteer nominator that she was, was quick to nominate me for an open position on our executive board and I unwittingly accepted. No one mentioned to me that this new role put me in line to progress to the chair and to be standing here giving this speech. As quickly as I gathered my bearings on the e-board, Lori announced her retirement. Everyone in the community watched as Jared Lubin led, led us through our first major transition. I learned much from Jared and then from Crystal Glad as these two served their terms as chair of the board. Early in the onset of COVID-19, the chamber found itself once again searching for a president. The unexpected change left many in our community uneasy about the future of the chamber. Crystal, true to fashion, doned bright lipstick, a trademark smile, and with head held high, she led us through. Welcome, Shelley. As 2021 rolled around, uncertainty had become the normal. Nothing is as it had been. Unconventional has become the new conventional. What more appropriate year for me to become your chair of the board? <laughs> I was excited about the opportunity to learn all the things and to practice all the skills that I have, had observed my predecessors exhibit so flawlessly. COVID has changed our lives. The skills I had prepared to use were not applicable. <laughs> Meetings were held remotely, Fundraisers were canceled or pared down. In general, the steam seemed to be let out of the kettle. My time as chair was not the experience I had expected, hoped, or prepared for. Initially, I felt disappointed and unsatisfied. Looking back though, I did learn. Probably more than anyone would have predicted. I learned humility, humor, the value of leveraging strengths of our entire team, both board members, members of our community, past board members, thank you to all of you. I can only make so many bad jokes on a Zoom call. <laughs> thank you for tolerating all of those. <laughs> there are stories of torn pants, awkward greetings, and other mortifying blunders, such as my pantyhose tonight. <laughs> You'd have to have been there. It is no secret that most people on this board and in attendance this evening are more refined and experienced professionals than myself. The most valued lesson that I got from, your, from this time as your board chair 
is with rare exception, did anybody ever make me feel that way? The spirit of support and encouragement resonates through everything this chamber does. Small, bit, small or big business, new or legacy, retail or industry, the Hibbing Area Chamber is passionate about the betterment of the whole. One should insert some cliche saying here, I'll skip that. All of this is to say thank you to everyone. Everyone that has mentored me, been patient as I floundered, laughed with and not at me, and everyone that has stuck by the Hibbing Area Chamber as we've grown to become champion advocates for our business community. With that, I'd like to introduce Christy Kearney, the incoming chair for 2022. Christy is far more professional and softer in presentation than I, but she's twice the leader. She's the self-proclaimed super volunteer. This list includes just about everything. She's an engineer and a scientist. You won't be able to slip anything past her. Her two daughters, her husband, and her dogs round her out and keep her grounded. As a family, they enjoy nature and are often hiking, skiing, fishing, and otherwise being good stewards for Iron Range life. Christy served as my vice chair, but was 100% a mentor to me. It is with great honor that I pass the torch to Christy Kearney. We do have an award for Joni. The 2021-2022 board president. Thank you. Well, good evening and welcome to the 117th annual dinner of the Hibbing Area Chamber of Commerce. That's just amazing to me. 117 years we've been doing this. First of all, I'd like to personally thank Joni. Uh, for the kind introduction, her service to the board, and all of her efforts throughout this past year. Her leadership has been extraordinary in keeping the chamber viable and moving us forward during COVID, and her humor really kept the Zoom meetings going, which, was fun to, which made it fun. I'm the Environmental Site Director at Polymet Mining in Hoyt Lakes, but I live here in Hibbing. I've been involved with the chamber in a number of ways since I moved back to Hibbing in 2006, although I didn't actually serve on this board until 2019. I'm very happy that my husband and I could raise our two daughters here as a Hibbing Blue Jacket myself um, to, and to be so involved in the community and this region, which has contributed to my desire to want to serve on this board. It's a privilege to serve as your 2022 chairperson, and if there's anything the Chamber can do for you or your business, please don't hesitate to grab me here tonight or after this meeting. I'd like to thank our chamber membership, all of you. Thank you for um, giving us the opportunity to help you um, better your business in any way that we can. I'd like to thank our president, Shelley Hansen, and her staff, Annabelle and Jamie, who do an amazing job, our and our entire board of directors for this chance to lead in 2022. And I'd like to take this time to introduce our 2022 board, a group of enthusiastic and thoughtful leaders from our business community. When I call your name, please stand and be recognized, and please hold your applause until we have the whole board standing. Our, my first vice chair is Erin Rainey, interim provost of the Hibbing Communi Community College, soon to be Minnesota North College. Our, our second vice chair is Tasha Nimi, environmental manager at Cleveland Cliffs Hibbing Taconite Operation. Our treasurer is Jennifer Wainenpa, Vice President at Park State Bank. We have Joni Dahl, who is just up here, the Material Manager at IRACOR International. Our Crystal Glad, another past chair, President and CEO of the Range Center in Chisholm. Aaron Bodek, owner of Red Rock Health Insurance and Loan Oper Officer at the Entrepreneur Fund. I don't think he's here, was able to make it tonight. Mikhail Brown, Blue Jacket Career Academy's director and work-based learning coordinator, as well as a travel advisor at Emily's Travel. He couldn't make it tonight either. Katie Ferdine, creative director at Pink Tie Design. 
Dr. Nick Giliotti, owner and physical therapist at Big Stone Therapies and co-owner co of 30 West Fitness and Recreation in Chisholm. Holly Min, Chief Financial Adv Officer at l &M Radiator. Taylor Slattery, Customer Service Representative at Security State Bank. Mike Steffen, Financial Advisor at Edward Jones. And please hold your applause because we do have a few more. So in 2021, last year, we had five new board members join our team. And since we didn't have a formal dinner, I want to recognize them especially here now. Christina Clement, Property Manager of the Lee Center Living Center. Melissa Cox, Marketing Specialist of North Star Credit Union, who also does freelance writing and marketing. James Helms, Operations Manager at Essentia Health. Jake Schuster, Section Manager of Mine Maintenance at Cleveland Cliffs Hibbing Taconite Operation. And Tasha Nimi, who is already standing as our second vice chair. And this year, in 2022, we just welcomed five new members to our board. So in the last two years, we have 10 new members, which is amazing. Um, these five include Joe Fatici, Project Estimator at Iricor Iorthane. Dan Hauk, Branch Manager of RMS Mining Solutions in Hibbing. Pete Carroll, Vice President at Bar Engineering Company. Jamie Linseth, Owner and Agent of Miners Insurance Agency. And Travis Marsh, Assistant Director of the Chisholm Hibbing Airport Authority. Thank you, directors. Can we give them a round of applause? I'd also like to acknowledge and thank our outgoing directors who I would also like to stand when I call their name. This year we, we have two stepping down, Celia Cameron, branch manager at National Park Bank of Commerce, and Paula Van Ballen, owner of Ohana Therapeutic Massage and Ohana School of Massage. And last year in 2021, we had four directors step down from the board who I wanna acknowledge since we didn't have our dinner last year. Past Chair Pat Ives, Director of Kitty Carousel Child Care Center. Pat, can you stand up? <laughs> Pat's been part of the chamber for a long time. She's wonderful. Rich Lees, owner of Lees Rental and Commercial Development and A1 Refrigeration. <laughs> Past Chair Jared Lubin, Area Manager of Cleveland Cliffs United Taconite Operation. I don't think he was able to make it tonight. And Jeremy Rodrigo, Assistant Vice President and Business Banker at Wells Fargo. I'd also like to acknowledge all the other former board directors and chairpersons in attendance. With 117 years of this event, I'm sure there are many. Is there anyone else that can, be stand, can stand and be recognized under that tech, those titles? No? Well, thank you all for your, thank you, John, and thank you all for your service and support of our business community. As you can see, we have a wonderful team, past and present, that I know have been and will continue to be of great value to our membership. The Chamber's vision is to create, protect, and enhance a healthy business environment for the benefit of our members and the entire community. We serve our members through promotion, education, information, and advocacy, with our key priorities to grow membership, improve communications, marketing and outreach, deliver on our mission, providing value to our members, and have a fiscally healthy organization. We have struggled these last two years, as everyone has through COVID. I'm hoping that in 2022, we can come out of our cocoons and have more of our functions for our members. Along with the continue, con continuing the amazing job that the Chamber and the Chamber staff are doing in pr promoting your businesses on social media, radio, newspaper, and other platforms, as with this new director, business directory that we have in the works. So I'd like to say it's now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Greg Prusinski, Hibbing's new city administrator, who started at the end of December. However, Greg came down sick today. Greg served in Becker, Minnesota for the last 25 years in the role of the city administrator and assistant administrator before that. He and his wife, Paula, have a love of the outdoors and have frequented this area over the years, 
with the hunting camp in St. Louis County and friends and family in the Arrowhead region. So it seems they are a great fit for this area. So because Greg was unable to attend, he did send his speech and Scott Hansen has graciously agreed to read Greg's speech for tonight. So please welcome Scott Hansen. Thank you, Christy. Imagine that you're the new city administrator in Hibbing and uh, one of your first chances to address a large group of business people, you're not uh, feeling well and they put a local disc jockey up in your place <laughs> to uh, say your words. So that's what we're doing tonight. I have Greg provided his, uh, his speech and I'm going to read it as he has it written in his words. So uh, Greg says, Hello, Hibbing Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for the invitation to introduce myself this evening. I would like to start by saying congratulations to everybody in this room. A vibrant Chamber of Commerce is critical to any small town, and because of you, time and your time and financial contributions, the Hibbing Chamber works. Prior to coming to Hibbing, I was the city administrator for the city of Becker. Becker is located about halfway between Elk River and St. Cloud on US Highway 10. Becker hosts a real large coal-fired power generating station. The plant is three separate units on one site and is scheduled to close. Because of the pending plant closing, I have been focused on energy policy and creating legislation to help host communities while developing a pathway for Becker to get through this coal transition. The number one question I get asked when meeting people, why Hibbing? My number one response is, why not Hibbing? I've always found Hibbing to be intriguing. There's a lot going on and the community has great potential and we're going to work hard to bring that potential to fruition. Also, my wife Paula, originally from the Duluth area, or is from the Duluth area, and I'm part of a hunting camp up around the Ash River, Cabotogama area. Some of the priorities for Hibbing that are rising to the top include strategic planning, updating policy and process, building communications, improving service delivery, especially through technology, addressing city assets that need improvements like buildings and infrastructure. With the legislative session upon us, we have set our legislative priorities. Three keys include funding for a new public safety building, improving the local government aid formula, and improving resources for broadband in outstate Minnesota. Business development specific to Hibbing, I see government's role as creating the environment where business can flourish. We should be working to grow the ingredients for development to happen. Ingredients like building and maintaining infrastructure, aligning policies, implementing financial tools that will spur on economic development and creating amenities that will help drive economic investment, to name a few. To help us grow those ingredients, we will begin recruiting for a community development director. The person in this role will lead our communities and existing businesses, recruit new business, plan on developing and uh, our development and infrastructure needs, identify funding sources to name just some of the responsibilities. This person will be the go-to for community development and we hope to have that role filled in the next two to three months. Our time is short this evening. Some other topics we're thinking about include st sustainability, electrification, mining, education, 
and workforce. Thank you again for the invitation to attend this evening. So, when you get a chance sometime in the next coming weeks or months to meet our new city administrator, Greg Brzezinski, make sure you tell him what a wonderful speech he did at the chamber dinner. <laughs> I did mention, most of you maybe already know, that uh, I'm also our chamber president's husband. So I would like to bring uh, Shelly back up to the podium to continue our program. Thank you, Scott. At this time, we decided since we have everybody seated, and somewhat paying attention. We appreciate you very much. I am gonna say though, that as soon as we're done with our presentation here, we're gonna move right into drawing that golden ticket. Now, somebody was a little confused about the golden ticket. Holly was a little confused. Not that I'm saying any names or pointing anybody out, Holly. But um, it, the, the idea of the golden ticket is this, because Holly didn't quite understand how it worked. <laughs> the, the golden ticket is we're only selling 100. They're $100 a piece. And when we're done presenting the, the business of the year, we are going to then draw one of those 100 tickets. And when we draw that, that person's name out of those tickets, that person gets to choose the prize that they want out of the seven auction items. Now there's six auction items in your book. The kayaks that are out by the raffle table were added this afternoon. So if your name is drawn, you could get a guided fishing tour. You could get uh, the kayaks. I know those are all in there. Not that I'm looking at those, Mr. Hansen, in case you didn't get a golden ticket yet. <laughs> Holly misunderstood that, and she thought that you got the first option to bid, and that's not how that works. So if you're still interested in purchasing a golden ticket, certainly wave your hand. I believe Annabelle can get you a golden ticket. There's still raffles and we will finish up the raffles. When we draw the raffles, we're not going to announce the numbers because it gets loud in here. They're gonna go on the board and you can check your numbers. If the raffle items are not picked up in the half an hour, we will redraw for those. Christy, Carney, can I have you come up front and so we can start the business of the year? Every year the Chamber goes through a process to determine the business of the year and last year, last year I talked to the board during our board retreat and asked them could we do something different, especially with everything new that we put in place with the Chamber from our website and our membership directory and our social media, I wanted to make sure that we were bringing in more people. We don't always see everything that people are doing and there's a lot of great businesses within our community, and some of them aren't chamber members, and we would like to make them chamber members as well. I believe we actually have a new chamber member here. Kriegos? Are they here? There they are. Eric Kriego, thank you very much for joining the chamber. I get to call him out today because he actually stopped in today, so I got to chat with him a little bit. I appreciate that very much. I think somebody asked me what I enjoyed about my job. I, that's what I enjoy the most, is meeting new people, meeting the businesses, finding out what we can do to create something different, stir up something different. So Christy's gonna help me. What we did is, is we decided to open up the nominations for Business of the Year to the public. And so we sent out in our email newsletter and on our social media to let us know who you think should be business of the year by our criteria. We had 118 responses and 37 nominations. It was extremely exciting to see all the different businesses that were nominated and why they were nominated. So tonight we're gonna go, I'm gonna have Christy go through the criteria and then we are going to give you our top three nominations with the third person being our new business of the year for 2021. So the, cri the criteria included demonstrated growth and stability, excellence and or innovation in their field, dedication and service to the community and the chamber, 
longevity of the business and loyalty to employees, special contributions of leadership and mentoring of others, support and promotion of the region, chamber, and the business community. And so I'm gonna name our third and second place nominations. And when I call your name, if you would please come up, we do have a certificate for you. We would like you to get your picture taken as well with Christy. And if you would then, no, no, okay. <laughs> and have your picture taken. And we would also like you to please remain standing until we go through all three of our nominations. So in our third place nomination, we have Iron Range, Plumbing, and Heating. We had the opportunity to do a business of the, or not business of the year, but a um, ribbon cutting and business after hours is what we did at Iron. The, the business is absolutely fantastic inside. They've done such a wonderful job. So we appreciate the time that you've put and money and energy into our community as well. Thank you very much. Our second, yes. <laughs> our second place runner up is a business in our community that I think all of us have at some point in time visited. We've known of the trials and the tribulations that this business has had and we appreciate what they've also contributed to our community to make it better. And the second place runner up is Mike Egan with Mike's Pub. So I'm hoping whoever's on this one brought my throat muscle, yes. This is heavy. Comes with a box. I should probably mention our last year, uh, business of the year, of course we weren't able to do a lot of fanfare again, like I said, uh, was Palmer's. Palmer's is uh, obviously a phenomenal uh, restaurant, community members, they do so much for our community, for their workers. Um, so we want to just acknowledge them as well as our last year's Business of the Year and their contributions to our community. And as I said, when we went through and did our nominations, we had 118 responses and we had 37 businesses nominated. So obviously there were some businesses that had more than one response and nomination. And this business is one that's been in the community for a while. They've been a chamber member. They are actively involved within their community. And they're the type of business that does not seek out the attention for what they do. And so a lot of times when I've mentioned something, they'll say, what is it that they do? And it's like, they've done this, and they've done this, and they've done this, and they're like, wow. And so we are very excited to be able to present this year's business of the year. Actually, it's not this year, it's 2021 business of the year to Flom Design, John and Emily Law. you to come up and give us a good night. Uh, yeah, right. So Emily cornered me about doing this speech and, uh, sorry. So Emily cornered me to do the speech and uh, that's probably good. You can listen to me but look at her. Uh, I had a football coach growing up and he used to say all the time, take care of the little things. 
always take care of the little things and the big things will take care of themselves. And as I've gotten older and as we've had this business, we've, we, we believe that. And I have three stories and all these businesses are family businesses and I think these three stories will kind of explain our family. So my grandpa was the chief of police in Stillwater and uh, he used to take us every Saturday to the McDonald's and Stillwater had all you could eat pancakes. So as you can tell, I was the champ. I was there. <laughs> I was the first one up. Couldn't wait to get in the car with grandpa. And he had this little blue Reliant K car station wagon. And he would take my brother and I and we would go there and he just loved to tell his friends about how many pancakes we ate and how, how we were doing in sports and, and what we were up to. But one time we were driving and like I said, he was the chief of police and he kind of whipped around and pulled over and there was this older kind of disheveled looking guy and he was sitting on a park bench and uh, if you know anybody from Stillwater, if you ask about Buster, they'll, they'll know who Buster is. But Buster had a tough life. He was a professional boxer and he never won. And he actually started to get hired to box to get knocked out. It was kind of his thing. But we, we whipped around and my grandpa got out of the car and talked to him and he got back in the car and we started to drive back to McDonald's and to get our all that we could eat pancakes. And I remember we got out of the car and I said, why did you stop to talk to that guy? And he goes, he's part of our community and he doesn't have anyone that to go talk to John. He lives by himself, he's always lived by himself. He's kind of started to push everybody away because he has some brain issues from being beat up. And I, it was one of those moments where at the time I just thought, okay, you know, and as you got older and you start to realize that there's a lot of people that are part of the community that for whatever reason, they need help. And so we, Emily and I kind of believe that and we've worked with that. That's kind of been our, one of our things. And so another moment or another little thing that changed at least my life and it goes a lot about Emily's family. Emily's grandpa, Grandpa Johnny we called him, he, his wife had passed away and Grandpa Johnny, everybody has this person in their family but when you go hunting, Grandpa Johnny brought one bullet and you only put one bullet in the gun, you took one shot and you killed one deer. That was it. That was hunting. If you missed, he didn't want to talk to you. He didn't. <laughs> and he, long term dairy farmer, so he would point at you and you'd get two fingers or three fingers pointing at you and there would be half the digits missing. Very, very rough man, very, but he, he loved everybody in the family and you knew that. But one year after, his wife had passed. He sat down and he kind of pulled this thing out of his pocket and it was my cuppeth runneth over poem. And he started to read it to us and it kind of, it was another one of those moments. It was a little thing, but it was, a, it was an, again, it was like this moment of, this is what this family is about. And I've married into this family that understands that even though things sometimes aren't perfect, we have, you know, if you're in a good family, you have, your cup runs over. So that kind of, you know, solidified where Emily's family was coming from and I had my background and we decided to move up here and Emily wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. So this is a very important part of the story. <laughs> Emily wanted to be home with our boy. We had one at the time and the second one on the way. She really wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. And didn't want to do anything else but be a mom. So packed everything up, moved up here. Um, we had our third son. And I came home and when you're married for a while and you have kids and things, you kind of, sometimes you stop paying attention to things or you stop forget, you kind of forget that everybody needs to time or whatever. And so <laughs> I called, it was very obvious that there was something wrong. And so I called 
Emily's doctor, and I said, Dr. Baldwin, uh, Jan Baldwin. So I called Jan, and I said, Jan, there's something wrong. <laughs> like, Emily always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but she does not want to be a stay-at-home mom anymore. <laughs> and she goes, well, what does she do with, like, adults? And I said, no, she wants to be a stay-at-home mom. <laughs> and it was a very, again, it was a very eye-opening moment. Jan said, there's this thing called baby blues, and it's normal, and you should pay attention to this, because it's very important that you pay attention to this. So by the end of the phone call, I understood that I needed to pay attention to it. And I also <laughs> knew that Emily needed to start doing something with adults. Like, no more staying at home with the kids. So uh, we kinda, I kind of mentioned it to my mom, I mentioned it to her mom, I mentioned it to a bunch of people. And somebody <laughs> saying, like, I need help. And they said, well, have you asked Emily? And I said, no, I haven't asked Emily. <laughs> So I said to Emily, what would you like to do? She goes, well, I'd like to be a photographer. I think that would be fun. Okay. <laughs> so I learned a lot about photography. I, if you know me, I have like research stuff over and over and over again. And I won't hit the buy button until like I'm 100% sure. And then sometimes I'll hit the buy button and then I'll back out. Cause, ooh, that's money, that's money. But so I bought Emily a camera and then my mom said, you know, you can go to a class for free. If you're a woman in the state of Minnesota and you've never been to college, you can go to one class for free. Don't, don't lose that, Aaron. Keep that going. Because that kept, that was the thing. That one class that, was it two, three days a week? Three days a week for three months. We had, I had to change my work schedule, you know. Yeah, we had to put the kids in daycare again. The mom that wants to stay home with the kids. And <laughs> we're signing up for daycare. It was like, well, we moved all the way up here. We could have done that. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, again, it, it's, the, it's that little thing that, that you catch, that you notice, that you say, that you do, that makes a difference. And I will say this, uh, you know, I'm the idea guy. I always say that to Emily. I'm like, oh, I had an idea. Usually it's in the shower. I come out of the shower, I'm like, yeah, I had an idea. And then she goes, I don't, you know, she almost doesn't want me to take showers anymore. <laughs> but, oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, I will say this. So Emily has learned to listen to me. And, and some, a lot of times she doesn't follow through with my ideas. She'll let them just cook away and then, but, then they go down the yeah, hopefully, <laughs> but she does follow through with a lot of them. And, uh, a lot of it again is we pick things that we, that matter to us or that we think are important or that we think are falling through the cracks. And so I guess that's just what I want to say is that we're all, a lot of you guys have, are in charge of much bigger businesses, much bigger employees. Emily has one employee, it's me. <laughs> I have one employee, it's Emily, right? <laughs> but you guys all have this chance to work with people all the time. And it's the little things that, that really do end up mattering. And uh, just, I guess, that's the one thing I would say about the, the town and about the people up here is that they, they're like, Jan Baldwin was very matter of fact, explained it to me, I listened, and it, that's the great part about this. There's a lot of places in the state of Minnesota where I think you could have that same conversation and you wouldn't get that answer. So um, I guess that's all I have to say about it. And we appreciate it, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you.